So we're going to get started on our base album build. You're going to cut two pieces, eight and a half inches tall by seven and a half inches wide on medium weight chipboard. And for the spine, one piece, eight and a half inches tall by two and a half inches wide. Get your black card stock. I'm using 85 pound, but you can use 65 pound if you like. And I'm going to seam these two pieces together with this quarter inch score tape. And you all probably know how to do this. Just line this up and pull that score tape. So just give that a good burnish. I can't even see the line. It's so, it's so dark. Oh my gosh. So the way you're going to lay this out is going to be, I like to have the, the spine in the center of that seam. And then on either side, you're going to have your front and back covers. So this, we are going to allow um, one inch top and bottom. So what I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this. Some of you have a one inch spacer, you can use that. But I just like to draw out with my my quilters ruler i just like to go ahead and draw out if i can draw out where my one inch is going to be that way i can just um, put my covers right on that one inch line So we're going to start with, I don't know if you can even see my one inch line there. I'm going to start with this. I use score tape. If you use glue, that's fine too. I like to put this one down first and then just um, have it right in the center here and then add my, my front cover, back covers. But first I got to get my score tape on all of these. So I have my spine, it's been covered in score tape. I put a bit, a little bit of tacky glue at the bottom, um, just because once it sticks, I can't pull it back up. But let's just give me, in case I make a mistake. And there's my center line, I had to draw it so I can see it. Here's my one inch line that I can barely see. So I'm going to line it up. I've got the guidelines to show me where I'm going. Okay, so I put it down. I just have I just have a hard time seeing. So there that one's in. So burnish that real well. Both sides. Good. So for the next two pieces, where is my spacer? So the rule of thumb for book binders is your spine spacer, it doesn't have to be an eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch or whatever you want to use. What it should be is whatever chipboard you're using, and it may vary depending on what chipboard you're using. It's three times the width. So here I've, I've glued three um, chipboard pieces together, the same medium weight chipboard that I'm using um, to build this album. That's going to be your spacer right there. Normally, I would use my my spacer and push my chipboard up against it, and that's how most people do it. But I've had it pop out or fall down, and so I don't do that now. But you could just push up your chipboard against that. 
what I do is I get my pencil and I draw a line again. That way I can see where I'm supposed to be putting my chipboard on both sides. Most, pe most people do this much faster than I do, but this is just the way I do it. So that's there, that's there. Okay, let me make sure. For some reason, this one looks... Yeah, that's right. Okay. So I have my... My score tape all around the whole edge of my um, inner and covers. So what I'm going to do, you could just line it up with this corner here and plop it down. And that's what I used to do, just line it up. And I probably could do that, line that up. See my line down here and line it up but um, I don't trust myself anymore. So what I do is I just put a little bit of, of tacky glue on the edge here so I have a little bit of movement. It just gives me a little bit of wiggle room. So if it sticks, I'm not, I haven't messed up too much. And I just kind of spread it out with my finger. You could use a brush, which I should be doing, but I just kind of spread it out. And I wipe my fingers. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is line it up with this, this line and line it up with my bottom line. That looks pretty good and then plop it down. Make sure you burnish these real well. You don't want to get any air bubbles in any of these pieces. And I'm just gonna turn it over to do the other side and I'm going to do it the exact same way. Put my, my glue on this edge and plop it down and I'll be right back. So this piece is in. Just burnish it real well, flip it over. So we are going to make one inch um, strips all the way around here. And I think I have my one inch. Here's my one inch little spacer, so I can just draw my one inch line here. I just made this out of chipboard too, so it'd be easy. This is one inch. And then once you have those drawn, you're just gonna cut out um, the excess cardstock. And most of you have done this before. Once you have everything cut, you just kind of work the paper. Where it's usually going to 
tear is at where you seam those two pieces together. Uh, so we're gonna try not to do that. Then, where is my, where is my, oh, oh just that, here it is. I also like to go around with my blown folder and just kind of go around the edges to kind of loosen up that paper. Everyone does this different, a little bit different. And there is the lay flat method that you can use too, which you wrap the front covers individually, the front and back covers individually, and the spine individually. Um, that's good too. I just don't like it because I don't like the way it feels. It's Some people have the way it feels, and that's me. I don't like the way it feels. So I think we have it pretty much worked in all the way around. If you have cheap cardstock, it will tear. Even good cardstock will, will tear on you, but cheap cardstock will really tear. And I use black construction tape on my edges anyway, especially on my spine, so even if it tears, it really doesn't matter. There, so that is worked out. So what we're going to do next is, see, do I wanna miter my corners now or wait till I get my score tape? I'll miter them now. So when you miter your corners, same thing. A lot of people are real good about just eyeballing it I don't eyeball anything because my eyeballs don't work very well. To do corners, this, the spine was three three widths of your um, whatever chipboard you, you're working with. The corners are two widths. So you put this, it's got two um, chipboard pieces, the medium weight chipboard put together. This is gonna be my corner miter. So you just put it there draw your line and that's where you're going to cut and you just go all the way around and do the same thing then just cut on those those pencil marks that you just made you can even see where i made the pencil mark i'm just going to cut on those pencil marks all the all four of them So all four pieces have been cut and mitered. Now I'm going to be adding a, a strip of score tape on the edge of the chip, the, um, the chipboard, and the black cardstock. And the way I do this, I've got my three eighths of an inch tape. So I'm going to start, start in this corner on the chipboard right on the edge. When I get to the where you have this little um, spine right there, I push that in, push it over, and then go back over the spine there. I don't go straight across. I want to push that score tape into that little seam right there. 
push it and then push it over like that. For the sides, you just go straight across. And again, the long side, you are going to push the tape into those little gutters there. So you can see how the tape has been pushed in to those gutters. And then just burnish it all the way around real well. And I also add a strip of tape on the top, and that's just to help grab the paper so when it, the glue is drying, it's just holding it in place. So that you can use a quarter of inch tape if you like. Now what I do when I get to these, where the seams are, I just kind of skip over it. Probably doesn't really matter, but I, I do. So I know where the seam is. skip over it. I'm going to be using glue anyway, so So we're going to start with the long edges. So where's my glue? So we're going to remove our score tape. And you guys do it the way you guys do it. Everyone has their way of doing it that works for them. This is just what works for me, and I keep modifying it depending on um, what I've tried. I just don't like, sometimes if you put score tape straight across, you hear that crinkling in the spine when you open and close your album. I don't like that sound, and that's just the score tape making that sound. So... Doing this, I have gotten rid of that sound, at least on my albums. And some people just use glue, so they don't even bother with score tape. And that is fine too. So we're gonna start with the long edges first. I like to use the glue and put a bead right next to the chipboard. That way the, um, the cardstock binds to the chipboard itself and that's with the glue. So let's get, and I am not a gluer. So when you see me struggling with glue, that's because I am not a gluer. And then you just go into the sides there. Like that. And 
and that start in the center and push up right in the center and then you want to go into that little gutter here push this cardstock down and over so you get that down and then go on to this seam push that down and then go over and now you can go out So once the two long sides are in, you go down the long side and you come to the point you're going to have a little lip right there and you just go over the edge and push it down. Push it down up against the chipboard. Same thing, go along that edge, get that lip, oops, and push it down up against that chipboard. Do that on all four sides. And you've all probably all seen that where you push the lip over on that ship where it says go down and push the lip right down there. And then you're just going to fold over these short ends exactly the same way. Get your art glitter glue or whatever glue you're using. Put a bead against the chipboard and on the areas where there's no tape. Push up in the middle. Go out to the sides. And then burnish, burnish that down. Probably have some glue coming out. Nope. And do this. like to tap down the corners so they're not sharp. Probably have some glue coming out. Nope. And do this. like to tap down the corners so they're not sharp. Good, so same thing on this side. And here's those edges, so pretty good. Where is my thick bone folder? So I'm going to use this thick, thicker bone folder that's not sharp, and just kind of go in this uh, this groove here. I tore it. <gasps> that's what I mean. It's so easy to tear, and I tore it. The outside looks good, but I just tore the inside. But that doesn't really matter because I'm going to be adding um, my black construction tape. But still, that just makes me mad. So there's that. Yeah, um, and I was going. I I was pushing too hard. I should not have pushed so hard. Oh my gosh. 
So you got everything in. Um, what I do next, this, you can get this to fold. Where is my bone folder? You can get this to fold. And it does fold over and we don't have any any tears and the seam it did not tear which is which is good what I do next and you do not need to do this is just what I do I use my black construction tape it's one inch black construction tape and I put it over these the seams of the spine because over the years opening and close this and you hear that there's 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 no noise there's no crackling yay but anyway over the years it wears and tears and you can get a crack in your spine so with the black construction tape since it's one inch what I do is I get my my ruler I put my half an inch line right in the center of this this gutter here and and then draw a line here so I know this is basically going to be half of the tape here and half of the tape will be on this side and I do it on both sides. This is just a guideline because if I don't have that I know I'm going to go off center and then I do the same thing on the back side. I put a tick mark um, where the gutter where I know the gutter is, there's the tip mark and tick mark, and then measure, use that as my, where I put my um, half inch mark on my quilter's um, ruler, and then draw my line here. So I'm going to be following this line on the outside. Anyway, if you don't want to do this, do not, you do not have to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the inside. And I'm going to start at the bottom and I am going to start just about there. You can start anywhere. Get that in the gutter right there. Now I'm going to pull this. You need to pull this tight so it's not loose. Just pull that tight. Turn your album over and then now you're going to follow this line. So just follow that line, pulling tight. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to be covering most of this up with designer paper anyway. You get to the end and then you flip it over and you make sure you pull tight you want you don't want this to be loose at all find your line your guide line and then go over and then meet up roughly where you started where is my there it is so about right here i'm going to cut and then you just burnish it If you get wrinkles in the, the black construction tape, they're fairly easy to get out. Now this way, you will have this on your spine and it will never, ever crack on you. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on this other side. So once you have your tape in, just go ahead and go over those seams again. So now you have your black construction tape on the spine. So the spine will never tear here. 
Now for the top part, I basically kind of do the same thing. I do my, my guideline all the way across, all the way down here and all the way around. So I'm going to do that and come back. So when I apply my um, construction tape, some people will just eyeball it. I like, I like guidelines. So I just put my little guideline all the way around. It's like a third of an inch all the way around. And I'm going to start with the long pieces. So with the long pieces, you're just going to get the tape and just start it at the edge of the album. And you just go all the way across following that guideline. Go into that groove. Into the groove. get to the end and I'm going to use my little tool and cut it. So then what you want to do is you want to adhere this to the other side. So I'm just going to push this down on that tape and then pull it down. So with, when you have these end bits here, you're just going to trim it to the edge of the chipboard right here. So I've got my scissors and trim that. So we're gonna do something different with the, the sides. So just trim. Trim that to the edge of the chipboard without cutting the chipboard, Carla. <laughs> okay, so that's those are done. And then I'm just going to do the this long side the exact same way. So you have both of the construction tape on both ends, and you've kind of cut it close right up to the edge of the chipboard there. So for these smaller sides, you're going to do it a little bit different. You're going to have about a half an inch overhang on the end here. And follow your guideline. Oops. Go over a half an inch. Out, pull it. Make sure this is straight there. Now, for this, you are not going to roll it over yet. So, you're going to lift it up, turn it so the sticky side is up, and you are going to have these little flaps like that. You are going to miter this. on my fingers. So you're going to miter that and you're going to miter this end too. So there's your flap. It's hard to get my hand out of the way and miter this one. So now you have your two ends mitered like that. You're going to pull the long side in. Pull that long side all the way down. 
So now it's like that. And see, you have this bit that's, you have this bit that you have not adhered down to the tape yet. I don't know if you can see that. See how we got that miter? I'm going to push this tape down over the edge of the chipboard right there, just like when we miter our album cover. Now, the problem with this one is it should be flush with the paper. It, it's going, it's, I mean, it's almost flush with the paper like this in this direction, but I'm going to just cut it just a little bit, just a itty bitty bit like that. So when I pull it over, it gives me a nice corner. So you can see it's a nice corner now. Same thing on this side. Where's my open edge? Open edge here. Open edge right there. Have not pushed it against the tape yet. You're gonna push this to wrap that edge of the chipboard right there. See if I pull that over, will it stick out just a little bit? So I'm just going to cut this so it's even going in a little bit more like that. Let me get my scissors. Let me show you what I mean. If I pull it over right now, this is going to stick out a little bit. So I'm going to go to the edge of my chipboard and just kind of miter it in a little bit. That wasn't very straight. But something like that. This seems like a pain in the butt, but it's actually, I'm making it harder than it looks. Just if you want to practice on some just chipboard, to get those corners straight. And then once they're down, you just you can kind of smooth them out. And they, they will look nice. That one's a little pointy, but I'm gonna smooth it out. And there's how it looks on the inside. So it looks pretty good. So that is a step you do not need to do. I just like to do that because I know once that black construction tape is on, and if you just find that cumbersome um, and don't want to do it, don't, don't do it but it will forever protect your albums. And once you do it, other, other people have easier ways to do it than me, I'm sure. I've tried everybody's way and this is the way that works for me. But you can look at other people and how they do it. Lots of people have videos on how they construct albums just with black construction tape. So there's our album, completely wrapped. It has our black construction tape all the way around. It looks beautiful. And now we need to add the hinge. So I want to go through the hinge process. Now, some of you may not want to under understand why I do what I do. But as a teacher, I think it's important that you understand why you're cutting papers a certain a certain length, why you're scoring certain places, just so you understand. I always tell my students, you, you can't memorize anything if you don't understand what you're trying to learn. So this this is an album I constructed, um, just so it's easy easier to visualize with the, the contrast and color. So this is covered with a lighter colored cardstock, so you can see the black construction tape. 
that we put on and you can just see how the black construction tape, tape looks at the edges and at the spine. So this album, once it's covered with uh, designer paper, you won't, you won't see much of this, but this book is now protected. All the, the spine pieces and all the corners of your, your chipboard. Now for the hinge, I like to use three uh, pocket pages instead of four because I utilize my front and back covers and they act basically like a page unto themselves. And why do I like to do that? Well, because this is going to be the holdup on a lot of albums. You have, the more hinges you have, the more your pocket pages have to go over and you get this build up and they don't lay as flat. So that's one reason. And I like to have my gussets, not at a half an inch, but five eighths of an inch because it allows the, the pocket pages to have more room to lay over. And I like my hinges to be three quarters of an inch tall as opposed to a half an inch tall because once again, when you put the pocket page down, you stop at half an inch and you're gonna have this quarter of an inch left over on the hinge that lets it lay over flatter. So all these things help to contribute to the pages laying flatter. So with this, this is basically what we're going to be constructing with this album. This is an eight and a half inch tall album, just like the one we're making now. So we're going to have a five, eight, here's the, the cover. We're gonna have a one and a half inch wingspan on this hinge with a gusset, five eighths of an inch, gusset, five eighths of an inch, gusset, five eighths of an inch. And this gusset that's separating it from the, 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 the cover here is five eighths of an inch. So those are all our gussets and there, here's our hinges. So when we score it, it'll make more sense. The other thing to let these hinges move easier in these directions, which is what you want. Before you cut your paper, you're going to be cutting a piece 10 inches long by seven and 15 sixteenths. Our pocket pages are eight inches tall. You want it just slightly less than eight inches tall so the pocket pages can slide on these hinges easier. You want to cut that 10 inch so the grain of the paper is in this direction. So you got there 10 inches. We're going to be scoring in this direction. You want your score marks to go in the direction of the grain. And you can feel it when you have your page. This bends easier, so your hinges will bend easier. This side is stiffer. You don't want to go against the grain when you're scoring those hinges. So you're going to put it in your in your scoreboard, 10 inch side on top. Where is my, here it is. So let's get started. You are going to first make your one and a half inch wing. So I'm gonna start with the first score mark at one and a half inches. So that's going to be your wing. Now we're going to form this first gusset right here. So you are going to go five eighths of an inch. So you're gonna count out five. So you got one half, then you go one, two, three, four, five. That's five eighths of an inch. And that is at two and one eighth inches. So that is your gusset. So I'm just going to put a G for gusset. That is your gusset. Now we're going to make our first hinge. Remember each of these hinges is three quarters of an inch on each side. So we're going to count out six. That's going to be three quarters of an inch. One, 
three, four, five, six. That will take us to two and seven eighths. Another three quarters of an inch. One, two, three, four, five, six. That is three and five eighths. So these two three quarters of an inch marks um, score marks, that is going to be hinge number one. Now we're going to go back to our gusset. One, two, three, four, five, five eighths of an inch. There's our gusset. So I'm going to put gusset there. Now we're going back to hinge number two. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's three quarters of an inch. That is right at five inches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Five and three quarter inches. So here we have hinge number two. hinge number two these these two pieces okay that was hinge number two so where were we five and three quarters inch right there now we're going to do a gusset one two three four five that is six and three eighths so this is a gusset and now we're going to do our last hinge. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is seven and one eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to be at seven and seven eighths. So that is hinge number three these two and then we, we we're coming so we've made our three hinges and we're coming to our last gusset right here so we have five eighths of an inch one two th one two three four five so that is eight and a half that is our last gusset And then here is our one and a half inch wing from eight and a half to ten. So that is our one and a half inch wing on that side. So I hope that helps you understand what's going on. This is a this is a mess, but um, it's easier to see than black 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 cardstock. So you can see all the score marks. Here's the bumpy side. We always talk about the bumpy side and the smooth side. This is the bumpy side. This is the smooth side. So when you're when you're making your hinges, this is a good visual. We we know these two. It's hard to see. Hard. I'm gonna let's see. What can I put underneath this so you can see it? Um, let me get that cardstock so you can see that a little bit better. So we are going to start forming our hinges first. We know this, these two form hinge number one, so just fold on that line. Fold in between those three quarters of an inch score marks to get hinge number one. Fold and burnish. And for me, it's just easy to pull that up and then push it down. And then you're going to move it side to side like that. But there's hinge number one, easy to see. We have our gusset. Now we're going to the next hinge, 
Here's the three quarters of an inch on each side. We're going to fold that in between those three, two, three quarters of an inch square marks. That is our second hinge. Just push it down. There's hinge number two. And just kind of roll it from side to side. We're gonna score those a little bit more, but I mean, burnish those a little bit more. But for now, I just want you to get the visual. Hinge number two. Here's our gusset. Here's hinge number three. Fold between those three quarters of an inch. Score marks. Just push those together. Now you have hinge number three. And that's the way it's going to look on the back, like that. So I like to go through them and then just kind of go back and forth like this. And you can go ahead and just kind of go over those on each side of those hinges. And I'm going to do this on the back side too. So there's my hinge number one. Hinge number two, I'm going to fold it. You want these hinges to move. The last one, fold it. In the other direction. So now we're going to go ahead and Put our hinges together. Now I like to use, so here's here's hinge number one. Open it up. You got these valleys. So you have these three valleys. Those are the valleys of your hinges. Here's the gussets right here. So I'm going to open this up. I know this is my hinge. Hinge, 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 hinge. So we need to adhere those together. If you use, if you're a gluer, if you use glue on the hinges, if that's your preference, that's that's fine. What will you, glue is stronger than tape. That I'll give you that. But what it also does when the paper dries and those um, paper fibers mend together, it makes the hinge real stiff. And it's just a little harder to move. So I like to use score tape. Now, there's my three quarters of an inch tape. Not three quarters of an inch, my three eighths of an inch tape. That's half an inch. I've got, where's my three-eighths of an inch tape? Oh my gosh, look at all this tape. Three-eighths of an inch. So with the hinges, I like to put a piece of tape, preferably three-eighths of an inch tape, one on each hinge, one on this this bottom part and one on the top part. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to put there's the, the two hinges. So we're going to put this one right here. Don't go over that hinge. Burnish that down. So that that piece of tape will close the top part. So this piece of tape will close the top part of the hinge. So we need to close the bottom part of the hinge. So on this hinge, 
I'm going to put the tape on this right above this score mark. Of which it is hard for me to see. So when you close this up, you are getting full coverage. Those two pieces of score tape are going to overlap and it's going to close this hinge up. So let's go ahead and pull the tape. Make sure you've burnished it well. And I just turn it over and I pull them together and just get those two together. So that hinge is done. Then you go to the second hinge, same thing. Use your tape. Um, gosh, I can't see. My eyes are my wink my weakest link so far i'm sure there's other weak, weak links too that will i will find out about but my vision is not good Same thing, pull the tape. I like to turn it over, find my hinge. Burnish that real well. And now we only have our last hinge to do, number three. Turn it over, same thing. So our hinges are, are formed. Everything looks nice and smooth in the back. These are going to be gussets. And this is going to fit right over these from this gusset here. Here's our wing. And this gusset here, here's our wing. These are going to fit right over our spine. So let me show you. This is a two and a half inch spine, just like we made. And these pretty much follow, here's the spine right here. That is where our first gusset is. It, so when we line it up in your book, you're going to be using this, this um, score mark as a guide to where you're going to put it on your spine. Same thing on this side. There's the gusset and it's right over that spine. So it's, it's much easier to put in your book. So now let's put in our hinge. Now I have to make my, my black hinge. I was just using this. So I'm going to go ahead and make this in the, the black version, and then we'll come back to put it in our album. So I have my hinge now made in the black um, cardstock. So I've moved these back and forth and screwed and burnish them multiple times going in each direction like this but what I also do and you don't have to do this it's just me so I fold it back pull all the hinges back in one direction I get my little score tool and I go down between the hinge and the gusset on each side so there I'm going to do this one next Now 
and this one. And then I'm going to flip it and do the other side. This is just help loosening up those fibers once again so the hinges can move and not be so stiff. Oh, I already did that side. So there, I got those and this is all looks nice. So when we put this in our album, let's bring back our album. Since this is a eight and a half inch album, and these are eight inches, I'm gonna show you with um, the hinge I just made. Where did I put it? This one, so you can see it easier. Here's here's your wings, so you can see the wing. Here's the gusset, the first gusset. So these are gonna line up about right there. This this hinge right here one two second hinge is going to be right in the middle so when you are lining this up you have all these guide marks you want like a quarter of an inch up here a quarter of an inch down there and if you line it up like this it's real easy to do so that's how i'm going to be putting in this black one I still like to draw my a line up here, my guideline, so I have my hinge straight. So I'm going to do that, and I use score tape on the back of all of this. And I'll show you how I, I put it on. So let me get my hinge. Where is my score tape? So I know this is right down the middle. Here's hinge number two. This is right down the middle. So I am going to put a piece of score tape right down the center of this. And that's going to be the first piece that I actually pull. I'm going to, if you have half an inch, use half an inch. If not, three-eighths of an inch is fine. Where was it? This one. Double-check myself. So, yes, this one. And I cover this whole backside with score tape. Let's see if I can even get this straight. There. Nobody takes this long but me. So I'm going to just keep on going and applying my score tape. And then I will come back once I'm done getting my score tape in. So I have my hinge completely covered with score tape. I'm marked off my line up here, my guide line up here. So this is a little less than a quarter of an inch. Because remember, this is a, a little less than eight inches. So we have half an inch on each, quarter of an inch on each side that will give us our eight inch. Now, the way I do this, everyone does it different. And what you'll learn when you're um, do it, watching different um, designers is their hinge system. Everyone has their personal preference. If you're new to this, you don't have a personal preference because you've, you've never made a bunch of different hinges. So this is my personal preference. 
every time a new hinge comes out, I try it and see if I like it. Every, every hinge has its pluses and minuses. Um, this is just the one I like. I like to have wings because there's more surface area. If there's more surface area, it makes this hinge system stronger, less likely to fail and pull and rip off. Just like our bodies, I teach human anatomy. The spine is the most vulnerable part of your skeletal system. It's moving constantly and all the weight is attached to the spine. Same thing with your book. This is the weak link. If you're going to have problems down the road, it's usually going to be with the spine and the hinges. So more surface area with those wings, it helps attach that hinge and keep it down. So with that being said, I'm going to pull the center, center one, the center tape I put down. I'm going to pull that. And since I don't trust myself, I'm going to add some glue. And I'm not adding art glitter glue because it dries way too fast for me. I am I am just slow. So just and then this way I have a little bit of wiggle room. Put this. Shouldn't be using my finger, but I am. So that's just going to give me a little bit more wiggle room if I need to um, adjust. So I have all my guide marks. I know that's how far up I want to go. I have this gusset right here, that line, and this one over here. I got glue. So once it looks good and it looks like it's all lined up, And I just kind of push that down. Now it has glue on it, so I need to let that glue set. No problem. I'm going to have my morning cup of coffee. It is now 6 12 in the morning. So I'm going to let that set. And it looks good. And if it doesn't look good, you still, if you have that glue in, you still have a little bit of time to wiggle it around and make sure it looks perfect. So I'm gonna go get my coffee and I'll be back after my first cup. Okay, so I've had two cups of coffee and it's dry. So now, since that part is in, we just go in there and we start pulling off our tape. And I just pull the tape off one at a time until um, I get to those the gusset, not the gusset, to the seam here. So I'm gonna pull this out, if I can get it. Oh, I got a little torn there. Pull that down, push that down. I'm just doing one at a time. And then when I get to where the seam is, I want to stop and kind of gently ease it into that, that seam. seam. There, so it's gonna go in that seam. last two you can just pull because now you're on the wings you are on the the inside cover so then just do the same thing on the other side reach in and
and we're done. So now we have, we've got to bend these again. Just make sure you're gentle and you don't tear the paper. So there is our album. So now we need to make our pocket pages. Sorry about the shadows. Um, it's late at night. Let's see. That probably doesn't help much. Well, but we'll see. So you are going. We are making three pocket pa three pocket pages. So you're going to need six pieces. And you're going to cut them at seven inches by eight and a half inches. All six pieces are going to be cut like that. With the eight and a half inch side up, you are going to score it at eight inches. So score them all at eight inches. I'm just going to do two right now. And... I am going to go ahead and miter my corners on these these piece these parts that we just um, we just scored just a little mitering and then we're, I'm going to put score tape on them. Then go ahead and fold and burnish real well. Then you're just going to bring these two pieces together. So you have the score tape on one side and with score tape on the other side, you're just going to go ahead and line them up. And once you get one side in, it's real easy to do the other side. So I'm just going to line these up, get my score tape, get it pulled, and line that up. Make sure it's lined up. And go ahead and hold and pull. You guys have all probably all done this a billion times. Then just go over, make sure you don't get any bowing. Pull this score tape. Push this over. And burnish. And now you have a pocket page. So it's going to go in like this. So we have our seven by eight inch pocket page. So you're going to make two more pocket pages. 